A while ago I modeled this syringe and I was asked by somebody if I would provide the diagram that I used to model it from because I designed it and um, I had drawn a diagram in flash and I guess I had deleted it so I went back and I got a, a screenshot of it from the video that I made uh, and it's pretty pretty poor quality um, but I decided I would go ahead and uh, design another um, thing to model uh, I do my drawing in flash and uh, I would provide this time the relatively high quality uh, image of it so this is uh, what it is um, it's a well, I'm calling it a spyglass and it's very similar in construction to uh, the syringe um, <clears throat> it should be a relatively easy thing to model for <laughs> relative beginners like like myself I still can run into some trouble here and there uh, but I'm going to give it a try and I'm going to provide the the diagram here okay so it'll be along with the video for anyone who wants to um, download it and you know sort of follow along or, or you know go off on it on their own tangent all right so uh, I'm calling this a spyglass and the idea is it's uh, got some modular construction uh, this piece uh, from here to here um, has the sort of the ocular lens so that where you look into it and it'll have some of these wheels or dials that you would turn to you know focus or <laughs> manipulate the uh, the image to, in some way this piece then screws onto this middle piece which has thread on both ends sort of like a screw <clears throat> so this piece would screw onto this one and this piece up here would screw on as well this middle piece there then would have sort of these uh, grips you could maybe put your thumb in one and your finger in the other and hold it and look while your other hand turns those those wheels down here these things um, I had trouble drawing in, in 2d but they're they're also uh, turning uh, dials uh, you sort of put your finger on this and push uh, you know around uh, the, the cylinder here to uh, I don't know <laughs> do something else uh, to this uh, machine all right so that's that's the middle piece there um, potentially with a couple of bolts uh, just to make it look a bit more industrial maybe to hold the thread on and then at the very front is um, another sort of lens uh, that would screw on um, that you would uh, you know point towards the the object that you want to to visualize so I'm going to give a shot at modeling this and it, it won't necessarily look exactly like the diagram but hopefully it'll be relatively close to this all right so here I am in blender this is just the default startup uh, screen but I've already got it uh, saved to a spyglass mini video um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete select you know a to select everything hit the X key and delete everything and then I'm going to go to 3 and 5 and I'm going to model this uh, from the right side in orthographic view note that my screencast keys are on and let's just double check that we're recording yes we are <laughs> okay uh, so let's get that image in the one that I'm providing so I'm going to hit N on my keyboard and I'm going to come over to background images and I'm going to click there and I'm going to click add image and open and I'm going to find it I've got mine in reference images under spyglass and it's spyglass mini it's a JPEG 603 kilobytes I'm going to open it and there it is now uh, the center of my stage is here and my image is here so I am going to work on um, uh, sorry moving this into roughly into the middle it doesn't have to be perfect um, let's try 1.7 okay 1.6 1 1.8 okay. ah, come on 1.84 uh, and I think that's going to be good enough for the centering I can zoom in quite far and the image is relatively clear all right um, the other thing that I want to do is up here in shading that may be closed for you close background images 
um, shading, I'm going to click on matte cap, ambient occlusion, and I think for this one I'm going to choose this shader to work with. And I'm also going to turn off the grid floor so that when I turn sort of in like in various perspective views, I'm not going to see the grid. All right. So back to the right side, ah, ortho. And um, here we go. We're going to start start modeling. And where to start? I don't know. I'm probably going to start right here in the middle here. So I'm going to go Shift A to bring up the Add menu, Mesh Cylinder. And I'm just going to accept the default values here. But I'm going to rotate this, rotate X90. And I'm going to scale it until it roughly matches the diagram. I'm going to bring it back to here. And then I'll go hit Z and go into wireframe. And uh, I think I go into edit mode as well. All right, and uh, I'm using the tab button here, tab, and then I'm choosing edit, but you could do it down here. I'm in object mode, you could choose edit mode right there. And I want to be in a vertex uh, selection. So you could, down here there's vertex, there's edge, and there's uh, face, I mean vertex, or you could go control tab. All right, so tab brings up object edit and control tab brings up the mesh select mode or vertex which I am and I'm going to select all these points I'm going to hit B for box select and I'm going to use my left mouse button press it in and I'm going to drag a box around there and that'll get all those points note that if I didn't do this in a wireframe mode um, if I was just in say edit mode and I went B and I box selected I would only get those front vertices and I want I want to get them all so Back to side view and wireframe, and that also lets me see through so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to pull this out. Now, I'm not sure what I'm doing with this part here. I guess what I will do actually is pull it out to here, and then I'll, I'll extrude down to create a section. You'll, you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to pull it out to about there. And I think I will go ahead and make those regions right now and these regions as well so um, actually I'm going to go ahead and make these regions and I'm going to decide if, if this was just a design element or if I really need it alright so I'm going to make this so I'm going to go control R to put it in edge loop and of course it puts it right there I'm actually going to do two and I'm going to uh, left click to uh, accept and uh, right click to finalize and then I'm going to scale this in the Y so SY and I'm going to pull in I'm going to slide it down to here and I'll zoom in so that I can basically see all right what I want to do and it may not be the exact same size but that's going to be good enough there all right so I'm going to have that and I think I'm going to do another one right now beside it. Control R, roll my mouse up so I get two edge loops, um, accept, scale it in the Y just to get it started. All right, slide it down here. And um, these can be adjusted in terms of their size later. I'm going to actually deselect so I can see what is going on under there. So I've got this one going right out to those sort of thin lines so I think I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to go into face select mode and go um, shift alt and select all those faces and, I'll, uh, and scale it in the Y and pull it out until it's similar size like that. Okay so now if I stay in face select mode if I go like this and like this I can select those whole rows. All right. Let's come back out of wireframe mode though and just have a look at that. All right, so that's what I'm going to be doing. So I am going to extrude it inwards, uh, but I don't want to move it in the Y direction. So I'm going to hit E to extrude. I'm doing both at the same time. I think that's what I want to do. Yes, it is. And I'm going to go, um, maybe I'll have a problem doing this. Well, <clears throat> you know what let's not do it that way let's let's uh, let's come back here let's just do one at a time otherwise I probably could switch to individual origins let's just do one at a time 
No, I don't want to do one at a time. I want to do them both because I want them both the same, the same depth. So I'm going to go E to extrude, scale, shift Y, and I'm going to pull them in. I probably didn't even have to be an individual origin. So let's pull them in a good amount like that. That's good enough. Um, good. Now, I'm going to come over to this one and I'm going to select it. And I am going to go, I want to copy this and I'm going to build the sliding part. All right. That goes around here. I think I've got the image. I'm going to build this thing out of those polys. Okay, Shift D to copy it, and then P to separate it by what is selected, which is all of those blue polys. Okay, and if I come out to object mode, what I've got is my original cylinder, and if I click on there, right there, I've got a selection there. All right, I've got a new object. I'm going to set origin to geometry so it goes right into the middle of that. And now, uh, because my origin is right in the middle, I can scale this right from the middle out. So I'm going to scale it out, but not in the Y. Actually, I am going to actually scale it in the Y first. S, S Y, and I want to make it a little bit narrower than this. And I can continue to work on that in a bit. But now let's scale it, Shift Y, outwards like that, maybe even more. And I'm gonna give it some thickness by adding the modifier, the solidify modifier. Now, I can't see how thick that is, so I'm gonna select my cylinder and hit H to hide it. And there it is, I can start to see it, and I'm gonna bring up the thickness like that. And let's go Alt H to bring it back, and let's have a look. Let's scale this in the Y a little bit more. All right, so that we can start to see the edges of this and save and let's hide the cylinder again and let's work on this I want to bevel these edges and before I do that because I've scaled this I'm going to come down to object apply scale I'm going to apply the solidify uh, modifier as well go into edit mode and edge selection and I'm going to shift alt click that edge and that those are the outer edges I'm not going to worry about the inner edges okay and now I'm going to bevel this by hand all right instead of using the bevel modifier so I'm going to go control B on my keyboard and I'm going to start to pull on my mouse until I it starts to angle like that and then I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel up one two left click to accept and go back into object mode all right so i beveled that let's go alt h to bring all that back and there it is now i think i'm going to scale shift y again and make it a bit bigger i still want it recessed in there a little bit though now eventually we are going to put on a subdivision uh, surface on this and just to get a sense of what it's going to look like. Yeah, there's going to be that for sure. All right, but we're going to get it's it's going to be smoother. All right, don't worry about that. Well, well, do that for a second. Okay, so we're going to do some stuff with the edges. In fact, it might be a good idea to keep that on for the moment because I do want to sharpen up these edges. So ignore how crazy that looks for the moment. I'm going to come in here and put an edge loop. Slide it down close, but not right at the edge. Okay, like that. And I'm going to put an edge loop here. And I might as well start setting up this region. So I'm going to do an edge loop right here. And right here. And that one I have to slide down quite a bit. All right, let's have a, a bug there. Ah. Let's have a look at that. Boy. All right, anyways, uh, you can start to see that it starts to tighten things up really nicely. Boy, where did that bug come from? All right, um, all right, anyways, I'm not gonna worry about that stuff right now. Um, I could probably leave that on. And that one probably be all right. Let's see, smoothing on. 
and get a sense of what it's going to look like. Now, I think what I need to do as well is hide this and put some edge loops inside here as well. So hover my mouse over here, Control R, click and drag an edge loop. Actually, no, let's do it. Let's do them together. All right. If I just want to move them out equally, I can just go Control R, two of them, except scale in the Y. All right, scale in the Y. Why we're we not doing it? All right, we're gonna do them individually. I'm not gonna fight with it today. I don't know why that didn't work. I know why it didn't work. Because I was in individual origin still. So let's do two here, just to prove it. Scale in the Y, and there we go. All right, sometimes that, that happens. I didn't bring it right out to the edge, but that sharpens it up. It also gives it a little bit of, of smoothness. Okay, once again, if I do that, it'll look quite nice. Okay. So let's go Alt-H and bring that piece back and have a look at it. All right, so now what I'm going to do, uh, before I copy it over, I'm going to do some work on this. Um, from the end, okay, I've still got my 3D cursor right in the middle. That's good. I'm going to go to the top view. And I think I will, um, um, I, I don't care. I'm going to just bring in a cube. I don't care if, it's, if it goes down there. Put the dot right in the middle there. I'll start scaling it down. Bring it up. Zoom in with the period key. And we will center it up. Let's go to three. Scale it in the Y. Scale it in the X, and this is nicely centered, all right? I'm going to scale it in the Z a bit. A little bit more in the Y. So this piece is going to be uh, attached to here, so you could push on this to turn that wheel around. So I'm just get a sense of how big I want this to be. Scale the Z a bit more and push it down. Or let's say, we'll start with that. I can adjust that. Um, because I've made some changes to this and I want to bevel it, I'm going to go Object, Apply, Scale. And I think for this, we'll just use the default beveler uh, uh, modifier. I'm going to add two segments. I'm going to pull the width down until I like what I see around there just to catch a little bit of light. Okay, now, <clears throat> that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. And I think, does this have a subdivision surface? I'm gonna take that off. No, you know what I'm gonna do? Because I'm gonna join these. I am gonna put that back on having a look up here seeing how it's affecting things I'm gonna go ahead and apply that and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna join these okay so um, at this point and let's oh, that is off let's take off smoothing <clears throat> um, at this point I could actually rotate this because my 3d uh, cursor is right in the middle, the origin's right in the middle. I could rotate in the Y to give you an idea of how this would go, all right, like that. And I kind of do want to move it off to the side <clears throat> because I am going to be adding uh, another design element. I suppose I could have used that, but uh, I'll just do it again. A cube. right down let's push this in just have a look at this scale the Y some more and these would be like the little gradation markers that'll go around all right, let's um, object apply scale, and let's bevel this as well. 
probably don't need two segments, but what the heck. We're obviously not worrying about polys. Let's see what that's like. All right, I'm gonna give this a try. <coughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the spin uh, tool to spin this around. <coughs> so um, I'm gonna select it, go into front view, and go into edit mode and, and make sure it's selected. Let me choose spin, and that's gonna put a number of them around here. All right, uh, but I can, change the angle to 360 so it goes all the way around the circle and then change the number of them to I don't know something like I don't know, let's try 14 and the reason that I moved this was so that it wasn't dead on in the center where this first one's going to be and so I'm just looking at this and saying okay do I like 14 do I want 16 okay maybe I'll go with 16 um, <clears throat> and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all and go remove doubles. All right. And control N. Sometimes the polys get, get flipped. Let's, let's come out of that for a second and have a look. That's what that would end up looking like. All right. Now, um, I'm going to select this and I'm going to go set the origin to geometry, which is right in the middle because I don't want them starting like this. I want this piece sort of right in the middle of those. So I'm going to uh, rotate in the Y and just find a good starting position by eye, kind of like that, and then say, okay, so that's how that would look. We can go ahead and put back subdivision surface if we wanted and just have a look at how that would look. All right, let's get rid of that. Uh, <clears throat> and so, if I'm happy with those, I think I'm going to go ahead and apply the bevel and yeah, and join them. Having done that, I can now take this, rotate in the Y, and position it wherever I want. And that's how it would generally work. I can also, Shift D, copy it over to here, which is what I wanted to do as well. Hold the shift if you need to move in smaller increments. All right, good enough. And I will rotate Y this one so it's in a different position. All right, so that's that's those those done. Cool. All right, so where are we at now? Let's um, look in wireframe. and decide if these are design elements. I think I'm gonna leave those for the moment and we will move over <coughs> to working on the thread. Um, all right. Instead of bringing in a new cylinder, we'll come out of uh, wireframe. Instead of bringing in a new cylinder to do this and lining it up, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this frame right here, this face, shifty, P to make it a new object. So I've got it there, set the origin right away to the geometry, right in the middle of it. Okay, so there it is. I've got just that face now, and it's also got a subdivision surface, it's inherited the modifier from this one. Uh, that's fine, I'm probably going to use that, it's turned off right now. I'm going to scale shift Y, I probably don't have to do shift Y because it's just a flat plane or face. I'll do that kind of thing and then I'll go into edit mode, select it and extrude it a bit there. Um, I'm not sure if my polys are flipped, well that way they're flipped for sure. I don't think they're flipped this way, but I'm just going to select them all and go control N just to make sure and to come out and I'm gonna move this back. Um, and I think I'm gonna move it back and, and touch this a little bit. All right, just to make sure there's a, a good uh, contact. We'll go into a wireframe mode and I will, um, probably the easiest way is to go right into the object in vertex selection 
and box select these and pull them out. Now I need this piece to be relatively big if I'm going to do the, the thread. So, I mean, I may take some liberties. I'll try it at that thickness and see if that's going to work. But, you know, it, it might not. It might be a bit too thin um, to, to really work well. well. Let's give it a try. Um, there are various ways of doing this, but I think what I'll do is I'm going to put in some edge loops. So I'm going to go Control R, one, two, three. Is that three or is that four? Let's go back. One, two, three, four. If I do four, I only need three actually. No, I'm going to do four and then accept it. I want to have a, have a look at how many rows of polys I can get out of this. Uh, one with some spacing in between two. All right, one and two, and that's really what I. That's the, you know, this the the most I can get out of this thickness. I really kind of would like to get three, and so. I'm now thinking of backtracking. Well, I could just do I grab this face. <clears throat> well, I don't need to use wireframe, I guess, and ju and just making it wider. All right, so um, that's that's going to be fine. It's going to be better. So one, two, three, four. I uh, I can actually see now my rows. Five, one, two, six, I think is what I would need to get three rows. Let's let's try that one, two, no, no, two, three. Yeah, I would need that. They're still relatively narrow, but that's that's okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to extrude these outwards. E to extrude extrude S for scale shift Y. And not that way, but this way like that. All right, let's have a look at that. And that's how they would be coming out, but um, we could bevel these. Let's see what it looks like with the subdivision surface on it. That would look decent, um, but a little round. Uh, let's turn that off and let's see how we feel about beveling this. Apply scale, let's come in and we can do this relatively quickly. I'm gonna choose Shift Alt, click the edge of all of these pieces that would represent the thread. Um, I should also do this edge. And really, um, because I'm not sure exactly how this is gonna go, I really would prefer to do this edge as well, in case I flip it around or whatever. So I'm gonna grab all of these edges, and we're gonna bevel them all together, all right? Control B, pull back on my mouse, like that. Give one, maybe, scroll one, two, there. There it is. And if I smooth this, all right, it would look like that. And what if I did edge split? Mm, not particularly crazy about that. You know, from a distance, that may be just fine. If I put on subdivision surface, it looks even better. So I will leave that like that for now. And so I deviated a bit from my diagram, but it, it looks a lot better having three sort of threads than, uh, than two. All right, so let's go back to the diagram. This is gonna be needed at both ends. So I'm gonna shift D and I'm gonna bring this one back here as well. And I'm gonna get a sense of so it's under a bit, and then we have our first thread. Under a bit and first thread, that's pretty good right there. So that would be there. And and essentially that's why I beveled that edge as well, okay? In case that was gonna happen. Notice I'm not applying these yet because I don't want my poly count to jump up right now and slow down my modeling. Not that it would, it would at this level, but it could. All right, so where are we at? Um, <clears throat> that's that's it, except for these things. So let's let's come back and do this end here, um, <clears throat> just like I did before to start building this stuff. I think I'm going to grab a piece of what I've already got. So I'm going to. I mean, you can do an edge. You don't have to do a face. I could grab that. Well. I end up getting, I will be, well, I should actually, sorry, I 
should bevel this now. Shouldn't I? Is there anything else I have to build onto this? Just those These things are separate. I don't have to carve anything else into this. So I think I'm I'm ready to go object, apply, scale, and ready to bevel this. So I'm gonna go in edge mode, I'm gonna grab that end and that end, and let's have a bevel of this thing. Okay, pull back. One, two, I'm just gonna do two. Relatively big bevel. Um, because it's a big object. Okay, so now having done that. I can come in here and I may have confused things for myself. What I want to do is I'm going to grab an edge. Am I, um, because if I grab a face now, by the way, because I've beveled, I pushed a little bit in and I pushed a little bit out. So mm, I don't know which one is my outer. Well, I could grab this one. That edge is part of the original cylinder. All right, I mean, I know it's an edge loop I may have put in there, but it's at the exact diameter of this cylinder. All right, it wasn't affected by the bevel. So for example, if I choose this edge or this edge to build a new cylinder, it might be slightly less, uh, have a slightly smaller diameter than the actual cylinder to, to build the next part. Although I am gonna be scaling it down, so it really doesn't matter at all. But if I needed the exact diameter I would choose that edge and what I would do is I would just go shift D to copy it P to make it its own selection its own object and I would grab that move it out and then set the origin to geometry move the origin right to that new piece and this would be the same diameter so I could just continue another cylinder instead of bringing in a new one or copying this one and going well I've already deformed it here although there's ways around that all right anyways I've got that and I am going to go um, uh, let's zoom in actually I'm drawing these uh, not attached right now but I may attach them later scale shift Y all right edit mode a F okay a to select F to make a face E to extrude pull it out like that okay a to select it all and control n just to make sure that my polys are proper okay now what I'm going to do with this one is uh, notice it's not quite touching the thread I'm actually going to bevel this one right now apply scale so grab this edge and this edge Control B, pull back, one, two, that's fine, just like that. Okay, so that's that piece is gonna be there. Um, now, I can go ahead and put origin to geometry, put it right in the middle. We have a bunch of little things, but we also have this cylinder right here in the middle. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, yeah, build this middle cylinder first and then I'll do all these things and I'm going to build it right from this one so maybe what I'll do is I'll go shift D to copy uh, remove something all right shift D accept move this out to about there for now edit modes I don't have to select it right now wireframe okay now select it uh, I didn't have to do that in edit mode, but I'll, you know, I did. Scale shift Y. Okay, that's good enough. It's centered with respect to this one. And now, hmm, I probably shouldn't have beveled this yet, but it's not gonna be a problem. If I'm, because of the way I'm going to lengthen it out, which is like this. Otherwise, I could have had a problem, but I won't. So that's that. Uh, let's make sure it's contacting there. Okay, cool. What's next? All right. Well, let's do let's do these wheels, and then uh, we'll do these little other little cylinders. Um, 
neck is beveled already see that is an issue uh, let's uh, let's do this though let's try this shift D all right and scale in the Y and scale shift Y and make it bigger and doesn't quite it's not exact the exact size but it is centered and so I'm not going to I'm going to ignore the diagram for the moment my concern was the bevel and uh, yeah that's the, see I've I've by doing that <clears throat> I've committed to that bevel which might just be fine let's have a look at uh, subdivision surface on that I no, I, I don't like it <clears throat> and so I'm not going to do it that way instead I'm going to come in here and I am going to find an edge shift D P to make a new selection and I'm going to build this myself build it myself well, of course I'm building it myself scale no there we go okay I gotta eyeball this a little bit I have to make a face E to extrude like that oh notice the discoloration that's because I went move this one to the left instead of to the right let's go back to the left just go A to, to select it all control and to flip your polys now I am going to like this better because after I do object apply scale I can now bevel these edges better than the bevel I had which was shrunk down okay so I'm gonna get that and then subdivision surface then I'll still have a nicer bevel okay okay let's have a look at this okay so this is like a little wheel that's that's gonna turn and what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna come control R two edge loops scale in the Y I know I've got a bevel edge right here but I want I want a little bit more um, a little bit more of a buffer zone so I'm putting another one there because I'm gonna select shift alt, shift alt all these polys and I don't want them coming anywhere near that edge okay so I'm gonna hit I twice I I and that's gonna separate them I can now move my mouse in and out to adjust how small I want them but I want them like that all right keep them selected and I'm gonna come over here to extrude individual I'm gonna click that button and I'm gonna pull down and I'm gonna watch all right let's zoom in a bit more click pull down and they come out Pull, push up and they go in I want them out like about there so click to accept and before losing the selection I'm gonna go control B and I'm gonna pull to bevel just like this add one segment and do that and that is what I wanted might even be a little bit too much now yeah that is going to be the problem with um, subdivision surface so chances are I'm just going to be smoothing this and maybe doing edge split yeah that's exactly what I'm going to be doing so I'm getting rid of the subdivision surface on this one okay um, now three so that's what I have chances are I'm gonna I would I would build these separate but I'll, I'll I'll try just quickly seeing what would happen if I brought this over scaled it in the Y scale shift Y we'll see what it would look like let's go around there Because if it looks okay, I think it does. I think it looks all right. All right? So, why not? 
we'll just use these. Just like that. All right. Well, it's come along. I am wondering, did I bevel this? Because I'm not thrilled with the amount of bevel. Although with subdivision surface, it looks okay. All right, I'm just backtracking. All right. We need to make some more of these little, those little things. All right, so um, I want a piece that I can use. In fact, I think I'm going to take an edge. You know, what I would probably do is I would take this edge here. All right, which is going to be the the, the, the diameter of, of this middle little tube like thing I bring this edge over here and I would extrude and I scale it and that's it you know no that's what we're going to do most likely so let's go into edit mode edge selection see that edge right there shift D P got it origin of geometry I'll bring it there and I'm going to uh, scale to about there. Okay, see? Edit mode, select, I have to make a face. E to extrude, and let's come right to like there. Select it all, control N, and I, I kind of want to make it a bit, a little bit wider. I don't know. I don't know if it needs to be, but I'm going to do it anyhow. So in wireframe, vertex selection box select oh I can't see it all box select those vertices there and then zoom in I don't know why just a little bit maybe object um, now this piece will need to be beveled uh, I don't need to do it in wireframe now and actually sorry I should do object apply scale all right, let's go ahead, let's do it. Let's grab that end and that end because I don't nah, I'll actually move it out so you can see it. Do I have, there, yeah, I may have moved it a bit, I guess. Let's grab this edge and this edge and bevel, control B, pull back. One, two, that was a bit of a big bevel, but that's fine with me. Bring it in so it sort of just touches. Okay, now this, let's see, just with smoothing, not that much, eh? Subdivision surface is the way to go, so I'm going to just leave that on, and uh, we'll go on a wireframe, I guess. Shifty, bring that to there, shifty, to there, I can adjust all these positions afterwards, we'll have a look. Let's see if it looks good. In there. Let's look. Oops. I mean, it's so small. don't really see much in there anyhow it almost seems like a shame to use subdivision surfaces um, I don't know I don't know that I care that much okay yeah this is starting to bother me so okay cool oh, what's next Let's uh, let's 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 make it look nicer. Might need to do some work here. All right, let's um, let's go work at the front. I just wanted to see some. Yeah. Piece. I can do a different. I'll do a different piece here. Okay. 
Okay, so the idea is that this piece fits over the thread. It's got to be bigger, just as this piece is a bit bigger. And in fact, oh, my thinking, come on. I'm going to be using that. Of course I am. Of course I am. I'm also going to be taking a piece from here. That edge, shifty P. Select it and right away set origin and geometry. They don't lose it. This is going to be used to build this. It's the same diameter. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have to make a face and come out for a second and turn off sub D's. All right, let's go back in. Okay. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to extrude all the way out to here. I'm going to extrude all the way to there, and I really probably could have wireframe on, and I should. Now, I also notice that my polys are flipped, so uh, let's come back and see. Yeah, all right, they were flipped. Okay, wireframe. Um, now, I'm going to try this. I'm going to grab these, box select all these vertices. And I'm going to try beveling back and see what kind of a curve I get out of this control B. I'm going to pull back. I'm going to pull back to there to, to where it's straight. Here's what I'm doing. Let, let, me, let me undo that. I'm pulling back to about here where, where before the curve starts. Okay. Control B to about there. And then I'm going to roll my mouse up. And I'm going to try to simulate this curve. And that's about the best I'm going to be able to do. And I can, you know position it, pull it forward, wherever, and that's fine. That's that's gonna be a good enough uh, a good enough thing to work with. Okay. No 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 uh, what to do. By the way, uh, as I look at this I realize that there is no hole in this to integrate with the with the thread. I'll either put some hole in or I will be moving these like this so it looks as if they're attached okay all right what to do what to do uh, I'm just going to build something down here okay. some kind of, what the hell is that weight paint oh I'm in the wrong object this one. All right. Mm. Let's try. I don't know. Let's try extruding this back. second and let's come out to here and go object apply scale edge selection we grab all the sharp edges not that one yet I'm not sure what to do control B and bevel one two Jeez, did those overlap there yeah okay let's not do it that way yet let's do this one this is a big bevel Two, like that, and these ones are quite close together, so I'll bevel these separately. Still put two though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sort of like an aperture thing that closes. I just want to decide if I want to do this as well. I'm 
will be putting on a subdivision surface and I will get an effect like that. I think I do. And then we're smoothing. Okay. Let's turn that off. Turn that off. Okay, so I, I gotta do something on this thing because it will look just too plain otherwise. So let's go ahead and I'll do that. Let's go ahead and put in uh, what to do. I don't know. Uh, why am I having problems? Let's get out of this. Oh, yeah. Let's put an edge loop here. I can just so just accept it. I just I do need to be in wireframe. I think I want to do I want to do a bit of an indent. So let's do another one. I think I want to do an indent here like this. You know that kind of thing. That might even be pretty tight. I'm gonna be beveling this. Let's scale this in Y, and I can move it a bit. Yeah, just do something there. Heat extrude, scale, shift Y, pull it in. Or should I want to pull it out actually? No, I think we'll keep with the theme. edges maybe even just one may have to do something down below there let's uh, go ahead and actually uh, bevel this edge we'll give it a nice big bevel decent size Okay, let's try with subdivision surfaces and smoothed. I don't know. I don't know why I did that. Something. Maybe I can even make this narrower a bit. I think this needs something on top too. I know something else that I would like to do. I was thinking of I'm just if I select this face and then go control plus 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 a good enough crease for me I like that um, I do want to do something else here though I do and I'm thinking little circles so let's select this face and go shift S cursor to select it and come on out so my 3d cursor is here shift A it's at a circle. Rotate X90 and scale it down real small. And bring it up. Now, one is the back, so control one is going to be the exact opposite, the front. Okay. I can't tell. There it is. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Let's zoom in on that. I don't know about this. Let's just try it. I have to make a face, heat extrude, and bring it out. It looks like my polys are all weird. Okay, so go uh, control. Uh, no, so shift it all. Control it. Uh, grab that face and control B to bevel. Just pull way back. I didn't apply scale. Give it some polys. 
and I'm going to scale it in the Y. I just want to flatten this out and smooth it. Okay, it's just a little dot like thing. Now, let's go three. If I bring this in and rotate in the X, sort of like a bolt, I'm not sure I really want to do this. I can switch over here to uh, wait not there here to normal and I, I can sort of come in straight you know that kind of thing I'm just wondering if, if I do this and I select it all global and I do a spin will it put them in the right orientation all the way around. I mean, I think it does. Let's select them all and remove doubles. Ooh, none. Control and flip any weird normals, and let's have a look at this. And it's done. It's done the job. Let's take these and set origin to geometry. And let me just decide if I want them anywhere. And embed it a little bit more. Kind of do. I don't know. I don't know how visible they are. I'm gonna. I'm, but I, I. I'm thinking I'm gonna leave them. Makes me want to do more work on here, though. Let's just move on and see where we're at. Is this smoothed? I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be right back. <clears throat> All right, let's have a go at doing these grips down here. I think I will um, leave that where it is, the 3D cursor, and I'll just bring in a circle there. Centered, I hope. I'll bring it down. Oh, geez, really close to the right size. How about that? Let's scale it. That's close enough. Move it back. Good, it's right in the center. <laughs> That's what we wanted. All right, let's uh, go into edit mode and. Uh, I have to make face and in wireframe let's hit I to inset and pull this in again it's not going to line up perfectly with the diagram but that's okay all right so we've got that uh, let's now uh, select it all and uh, well it's going to be off-center now E to extrude We'll pull it out a reasonable distance, not too much. Let's get out of wireframe and have a look. Yeah, my polys are all discolored, so A to select it all, control N. Uh, well, maybe they were fine in the first place. Let's go back and try to center this up. Origin of geometry. And uh, this blue line. We'll just center it by eye like that. Okay, cool. All right, let's go back into edit mode and grab this face and this face and go Control E, bridge edge loops. And I'll select it all and Control N to flip my poly so they're all facing outwards. And that's what we have so far. All righty, now, my friends, now. Let's see if we can get this right the first time. Edit mode. We're going to, what are we going to do? We're going to close that. We are going to put two edge loops. Roll my mouse up. I get two, accept, scale in the X, and pull out. Like that. Now I can select 
inner polys that I want, but let me come back to three and see where the middle is around here. Okay, so there's the middle, so I'm going to grab this one and this one. This one and this one. This one and this one. This one and this one, and let's have a look and see how high up we are. Okay, let's, let's go for another one. This one and this one. All right. I need to separate this by selection. So shift D, P, and there it is. Okay, let's do origin and geometry. Let's go into edit mode, select, E to extrude, pull this out a ways, and um, let's try scaling it in the Z and seeing if I can just get it to do that before it comes through the other side. Okay, it comes through. All right, let's scale it in the Z a bit more. Push it back. All right, so we get that. Eh? Da, 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 da. Um, let's try pulling it out a bit more. Let's try scaling the Z just those. And I think I got it. I think I got it. I think I got it. Now, um, this piece here, I am not going to be putting a subdivision surface on, but this piece I am. So let's work on that too. Let's go up here to scale in the X and pull them out, not quite to the edge. And this side, put one there and pull it out. And one here and pull it down. Let's do the same on the other side. Control, pull it up. to do well maybe I do need to do something on the inside too. Oh no I have those on the inside. And smooth it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what that would look like there. Alright. And this guy, let's do object apply rotation and scale. And let's see how good of a bevel I can get on this. Let's see what it looks like smoothed. Okay, and from a distance it should look okay. I mean, I can I can adjust that. Uh, let's try edge split first of all. But of course I'm going to be putting holes in it so we'll leave that there for now. Um, we can do uh, shift S cursor to select it now and bring in a cylinder. Rotate Y90 and scale it down. scale of the X so we make sure it goes through. Let's have a look at the diagram and wireframe again. Okay. Shift D. Oops. I lost it. That's all right. Bring it down. Let's join all these together and in solid view let's go into edit mode let's just make sure all the normal sort of face the right way and then I'll do object apply rotation and scale okay they're all right so I'm gonna punch holes with these select this object and we'll just bring in a boolean we'll put it down there difference select those all right well, let's not do that yet. Let's bring it above. 
I think that'll work better. Hide that. Yeah, that works better. And there are the holes. Now let's see if it's possible to bevel these edges. <laughs> And then if you get extra pieces, just shift deselect them. Just try to get the entire ring. So I'm doing shift and alt. Oops, where did I get there? And deselect. All right, we'll do it on the other side. We're gonna have some shading issues here. Uh, we'll see what we can do about that. Hopefully we got it all and nothing else. I'm gonna to try to do the smallest bevel. Control B, pull back. One, two, maybe even. It's not bad, except we got some weird shading. That's all right. Um, let's try this. Normal's on smooth. Let's try 25. Nope. Let's try 12. Let's try 15. Nope. All right, 12 it is. And that's what I'm going to get. Okay, and from a distance, not going to look too bad. Okay. Now, I'm going to have to join these, so I want to have a look at this. I'm going to apply this subdivision surface, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to join it. Yeah, I'm going to just join it. I'm going for it. And now we have to, we have to do that again. That's fine. Okay, so this was lined up, right? Yeah, it's lined up. Okay. Is it wide enough? Does it need to be scaled in the X? Well, it is now. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to do this. I think I'm just going to use a, um, a cube here. Uh, so I'm just going to. Um, you know, where's my 3D cursor? It's right there. I was right there. I let go. Uh, Shift S. Cursor selected right in the middle there. Shift A. Bring in a cube. That's pretty much centered, so I'm not going to follow the diagram here. I'm just going to do it this way, I think. Let's just have a look at that. I imagine that was in there, but beveled. Now, is that in? Yeah, it is in, right? Okay, so, so, um, but width though. use later. In the meantime, I will apply scale. I think I'll bevel this one by hand. Let's bevel the vertical edges first. Control B, pull back, give it a few segments like that. And this one, control B, pull it back, give it a few segments like just like that. Okay, and then I can you know I can smooth that. And I can adjust the smoothing as well. Or try edge split. And that's fine. Isn't it? It's fine, eh? Okay. And then I was thinking it's not fine. It's not fine. Alright. Am I 
seeing something or am I just seeing a reflection? What if I uh, actually do a subdivision surface on that? Is that finer? Is that better? The bevel is, is odd. get wider so in this I was thinking well I'll, I'll see I'll see about that it might be that this gets narrower actually like that change the way that let's actually look at the diagram okay yeah yeah but that okay what I was thinking of doing and then rebuilding it okay a bit like this hang on a second H bring that back so that would kind of hold that with a bolt and bevel that and this narrow right how was that gonna fit if I didn't widen this scale on the X let me just see what that's like maybe that's what it was that's that is what it was in fact um, bolts on there too okay yeah I like that so now what I would do is I would check the apply scale let's try the default bevel over there two segments and reduce the thick the width let's just try that for a second and see if I gotta do anything on the inside And what if I, oh, get rid of these guys. Well, actually, I could use one of those, couldn't I? Do I have any bolts anywhere? Mm -hmm. Just because it's in the right orientation. Let's just take this face and make it its own selection. Because I want to use that. And let's delete these. Let's take this. Extreme. 
extrude, bring it out, control B. Just like that. And I think I'll scale it in the axis and we'll flatten it. We'll smooth it. And we'll put it there. And then let's mirror this across. Okay, mirror in the X with respect to this guy. And there it is. I'll apply that. We'll apply that bevel and we'll join these. And we'll just make a decision. I think I like it. So I'm going to join the. Uh, what do I have to do with this? Uh, is there a subdivision surface? It's too bad there is, really. It's a waste. I don't think I need it. No, I'm not going to use it. No mesh data to join. Okay, that, that, control. All right, let's see. There's a chance that I want to move this a bit, but in the meantime, let's grab uh, both of these and pull it up to here. Good. Now, how am I going to do this? Well, we're just going to go in and we're going to delete. Um, is this one actually smaller? You know what? It, it actually is smaller than this one. I just don't know if I care. I'm not sure I want to do that. And so what I think I'm going to do instead is uh, just work with it as it is in wireframe mode. I'm just going to box select. Kind of go like that for now. And zoom right in. here let's go a bit more let's let's go like that in an edge select mode let's grab that edge put a face actually let's go back to solid mode and see I probably should bevel that I love this. Let's have a look. No, I don't really want to change change it that much. What if I put a cylinder pin in there? Will it look a little bit more? Scale shift X, but we'll know 
know what's there. You and I will know what's there. Right, uh, how do I, how do I view that? Control. Too big though, is it coming out of that? But can I hide this? Yeah, obviously, I don't like that. So let's could have done them at the same time. Well, I'm never going to see that cylinder. But That's what we got so far. Nothing on there that we need. And is it, was there a subdivision surface on that? Yeah, there is. Whoa. Okay, fine. here and then we'll throw some bolts on if we don't forget okay so um, another cylinder but uh, maybe I'll just take this edge here uh, that edge shifty P come out I don't know if I grabbed it. <laughs> it said origin to geometry on the wrong thing. Um, let's go uh, scale. And around there. Select F to make face. E to extrude. And we will come back right to there. Notice the color of my poly. So. Select them all, control N, changes that. Oh yeah, wireframe. Okay. Um, I don't have anything great planned for this. I was just gonna have at it. So, um, inset. E to extrude in, and uh, we could uh, inset again like that. Just E to extrude again, maybe, and then let's just scale like that. Could be as simple as that. Let's come out and do an apply scale and uh, bevel, and then we'll see what we want to do. Okay, 
so let's grab that one and this one. Let's bevel these ones uh, on their own. Control B. Get a nice big bevel going. Let's bevel this one and this one. One, two. Let's bevel this one as well. Let's have a look at this with the sub D on it. Okay. Smooth it. Now we gotta do something with this, don't we? I might just want to do another little inset here somewhere. Maybe up, up towards the front of it. Do the last one was towards the back, right? Yeah, I'll do I'll do one up to the front. Let's turn that off though. Okay. So let's do control R and do two of them. Scale it to Y. We'll do just a narrow, narrow one. Bring it up near here. Yes, yeah, I hope that's narrow enough. Let's scan it in my face. Grab that whole row, E to extrude, scale shift Y. I'm coming in again. Not too much, just a small amount. And we'll put an edge loop to tighten this up here. I'm gonna go pretty close. And here. Let's have a look at that and see what I need to do on the inside. Likely I should do one on the inside. Uh, two on the inside actually. It's also a question of if I should be uh, beveling. Uh, let's try two of them and scale it in the Y and it in. It's a little bit odd the way that worked out, but that's fine. So we'd have that. Let's get the sub D on again. Let's just make sure it looks good. It looks very good. Looks really good. It's a bit odd, but uh, well, it still looks pretty good. All right. So what are we missing? Wireframe bolts. Try some bolts and see how that works. Okay, we'll do so. Do new bolts. Let's grab this Shift S cursor to select it. Shift A. Circle. Rotate by ninety. Cursor selected. Let's bring in a cube, and we'll do the little cut thing. All right, scale the Z. And in the X, push it in like that. Scale it in the Y. So it, uh, no, I don't think I want it all the way through. So in that case, I'm gonna make it a bit thinner. Sort of push in there. Is that too much? Let's go scale in the Y a bit more. Shift D, uh, rotate X90, and we'll join those two things together. And that'll be our bowl push in like that. Let's do object apply, rotation, and scale. Let's see if I can do a Boolean on this. This is going to be so small. 
looks good. Let's hide that. All right. Let's smooth that and let's put on edge split. Hmm. That's the only thing all about edge split. Uh, let's try actually. No, still the same difference, see? Eh? Okay, let's forget that. Let's use edge split. First of all, and that's probably gonna throw it off. No, it didn't throw it off. All right, fine. And we are going to um, rotate the Y. And I'll actually mess around with it this way. I could switch to normal. Rotate the Y, I probably will. Let's have a look at this. All right, so I will, uh, whoop, not that. Down here, I'm gonna switch to normal. But I th think I want to just double check where my positioning is. It really doesn't matter that much uh, to be exact, although I might as well. So I'm just gonna push it up, pull it down, and look at it this way, and have a look. Okay, I can live with that. And I do like that, actually. So let's select it. And let's look at three wireframe shift D and uh, damn it. Yeah, all right, we'll mess around with it this way. We'll just do our thing this way. All right, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I shouldn't have done it that way. Fine, I hear you. All right, let's let's do this. Uh, let's actually see if I'm in. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the vicinity. I am in the vicinity. Okay, let's um, rotate the Y. I'm still in the vicinity. I'm still in the vicinity. I'm gonna come back to normal, and that makes just makes it easier to push it in. Yeah, that's fine. That's all right. So I got the two of those there. Let me just double check that it looks like it would be holding the thread. Yeah, it does to, to some extent. That being the case, I think I'm going to join these origin geometry and mirror these. Did I apply that? No, let's just apply that. Let's mirror these in the. Ah, uh, wait. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Global and. For this, let's go Shift S, cursor selected. Kind of right in the center. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, those mirror in the X across this. Did I choose it? No, I didn't. Mirror in the X across that. And we got, there's three, there's Control 3, the other side. Ooh. Okay, I like that. Let's see where else we need these. Just because I supplied it. Um, right, right here, Shift D. Let's bring them up here. And have a look at that. Okay, they're in both positions. Uh, looks like a torpedo. Being the case, I'm going to move this in a bit. There's no hole in there still, but I don't think it's necessary. so that I have a 
about two, two threads visible. And note what's this? that I can still rotate this as long as the center, as long as the origin is in the center of that, I can still go rotate Y and it should be good. Okay. I think I have done, ah, uh, yes, I moved this without these. Silly. <laughs> Do I have a sub deal on this? I mean, I could just apply it now. Do my you know, poly count will go up pretty high, but that's just the way it is. All right, not going to do much more. But I think I've basically done what I wanted to do on this. there all right so um, yeah thanks for watching see you next time